Oh, doesn't that look lovely? Yeah, it looks lovely, doesn't it? Yeah, sure. Lovely flame. Lots of heat and light. Absolutely. How would you actually, wondering how would you actually measure the heat and light a flame, uh, a flame actually gives off? Um, I, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't really know. Well, it's obviously part of the candle, isn't it? Well, it's per part of the combustion, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Really? Yeah. It should be uh, considered to be part of the combustion, yeah. the heat but, and the light. Yeah. But it's lovely just looking at this candle burning in air. Absolutely, of course, yes. Yeah, burning in air. Hmm. But uh, I'm, I'm quite happy to... Um, I, I don't think anyone would disagree with you that the candle is burning in air. Yeah. The trouble is, though, some people, some people would think that the only reason why that candle... Is that flame is able to burn? Yeah, is only because of oxygen in the air. Oh right, okay. That's oh. the only reason why. Right, okay. Well, hmm. Well, we know there's there's air present because everybody knows that candles and um, other things burn in the presence of air. Yeah. We yeah. even breathe in air. air. Yes, but. How do we actually know there's oxygen as part of the air, as mm. a constituent of the air? Because yeah. I'm looking at this candle, I can't see any oxygen at all. Sure, yeah, I understand, but we could, we don't need to verify. Uh, I mean, this, this, what we're seeing now, de demonstrates combustion in air. Yeah. Yes, doesn't it? It doesn't yeah. demonstrate combustion in the presence of oxygen, oxygen because we can't verify there's any oxygen there hmm so hmm. how are we going to go about pr trying to prove the presence of oxygen in the air well let's go and find out yeah uh you can be very intelligent and very good at what you do and you can still be stupid In this video, we're going to try and determine whether oxygen is really a constituent of the air. And in order to do that, we only have to go back in time and look at the discovery of oxygen in the late 1700s. Joseph Priestley was an English clergyman and scientist, born on the 13th of March 1733 in Yorkshire. He later carried out extensive work in chemistry within the field of gases, or as they were called at the time, airs. His most notable discovery was deflagisticated air, later to be renamed oxygen by Antoine Lavoisier. Using a glass magnifying lens and the sun's strong rays, Priestley heated what is now called mercuric oxide and collected the gas that was released. He discovered the gas when inhaled was five times as good as common air. The gas also improved combustion and relit a glowing splint. What we see here is some mercuric oxide being heated in a test tube and a glowing splint is introduced. The glowing splint relights. Relighting a glowing splint is the classic test for the presence of oxygen. So it's clear from the demonstration mercuric oxide contains oxygen and when heated it releases that oxygen. But how did the oxygen get there to begin with and where did it actually come from? Is oxygen really a constituent of the air? To answer these questions we must first understand the process of calogenation and what better way to do this then to take a look at the work of Antoine Lavoisier. Antoine Lavoisier was a French chemist born in Paris on August the 26th, 1743. His interest in chemistry surpassed his enthusiasm for a legal career and at the age of 21, Lavoisier dedicated his life to science. In August 1774, Joseph Priestley met with Lavoisier in Paris 
and described how he had recently heated mercuric oxide and collected a gas in which a candle burned vigorously. Furthering Priestley's work, Lavoisier set to work on his own experiment which consisted of a glass retort filled with mercury and normal air, sealed by a bell jar placed in a mercury reservoir. After heating the mercury in the retort for several days, red mercuric oxide formed on the mercury surface. The mercury level inside the bell jar rose up because of a reduction in the air within the retort. Lavoisier concluded the reduction was due to a certain element of the air being absorbed into the mercury. For Lavoisier, this experiment helped to cement his understanding of the existence of oxygen as a constituent of the air. But does this really prove oxygen is a constituent of the air? Is it possible another explanation can account for this reduction of air and why mercuric oxide releases oxygen when heated? We think there is. Well, it's common knowledge when materials are heated, they expand, and when cooled, they contract. We are of the opinion when a material expands, a vacuum is generated inside, and as nature abhors a vacuum, the surrounding air will fill the void inside the material. Upon cooling, the material contracts, and in so doing, locks in and concentrates the absorbed air. This process we call calogenation. The process by which a substance or material absorbs the surrounding atmosphere when heated. So when Lavoisier heated the mercury, it was possible mercury absorbed a specific amount of the air inside the system. And after the mercury cooled and contracted, the air that had been absorbed into the mercury was concentrated into oxygen. In other words, Lavoisier had unknowingly manufactured oxygen through calogenating the mercury with plain old boring air, and there was no oxygen as part of the air to begin with. This means air is a simple substance and is not made up of constituents, as Lavoisier had later put forward. Given this, we can understand when Lavoisier introduced his new oxygen theory, recognising oxygen to be the active principle in the atmosphere, interpreting its role in combustion and respiration and being a constituent of water, much controversy existed. People like Priestley and other notable figures were unconvinced by Lavoisier's assertions. After looking at Lavoisier's work some 250 years later, we too are unconvinced oxygen is a constituent of the air. We're of the opinion Lavoisier was wrong and merely created his theory to challenge and destroy the current understanding at that time. So there we go, it's very clear that Lavoisier didn't prove that oxygen was a constituent of the air. Even though he stated that it was. Or he came to that conclusion. Hmm. So he only thought of oxygen as, as being a constituent of the air. Well, what, what I reckon happened was that he uh, made some observations, noticed a um, reduction of air within a, a number of his experiments, and, and he developed a hypothesis, which was, um, I, I hypothesise that oxygen is a constituent of, of air and it is that which is absorbed into these materials yeah that's his hypothesis but he never carried out any tests to demonstrate whether his hypothesis was right or wrong mm. he, it was just accepted to be true and that's something that I I see a lot in science and that is um, a lot of cl scientific claims are merely hypotheses, but yeah. they, they're lacking um, proof. proof, or they've not been tested yes. to be true or to be false. Well, it's very similar to looking at the candle again. A lot of people think that that candle is only burning 
because of the oxygen in the air. Absolutely. Very similar to Lavoisier. But people are only thinking that there's oxygen in the sure. air. Sure, there's no proof that oxygen is in, in the, the air, air, is a constituent of the air. air. It's funny that, isn't it? Yeah. Let us know what you think. We'd love to, love to know your comments. Absolutely. Let us know whether you think oxygen is a constituent of the air or if you're in agreement with Priestley and uh, other people. Kerwin. Who, Kerwin and... Uh, Watt. Watt, James Watt and people like uh, Peter and myself, you know. If you, you, t you too think that uh, oxygen is not a constituent of the air, I'd love to know your views. Hmm. So there you have it. So thanks ever so much. Hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, always remember, till next time, if something doesn't make sense, it's probably nonsense. Yeah. Okay, thanks ever so much. Bye. Okay, tell her. Bye. The earth isn't round, it's flat. How do you know? I've observed it in all my travels over Europe. It's flat, everywhere it's flat.